It's another edition of Bull in the Basement, and all weekend long, it's now the 15th annual Buffalo International Film Festival. John Fink, the artistic director, is joining us, as is Anna Shimei, correct, Anna? Yes, awesome. yes, excellent. Awesome. It's our first meeting, the three of us together, so I'm glad I got that right. Uh, Anna, you are the interim executive director of the Buffalo International Film Festival, and I'm going to start with you. I love your background. Obviously, that's the background of this year's, it's sort of the themed background of this year's festival, and buffalofilm.org right off the top. For people that's the website to go to for all the information uh, on this this uh, year's festival which is on now and goes all the way through monday uh live viewing of uh, some of the movies uh, that have entered at the north park on hurdle birchfield penny over by, by by buff state which is awesome coming off covid that people can actually go and see these movies which is super cool some are short some are docs some are long form whatever the case may be it's incredible and they can watch virtually as well and again buffalofilm.org is where you can get all the information so anna I want to start with you when we okay. start when we start with film and we when you think about film festivals the automatic is oh Tribeca Sundance Cannes whatever the case may be right tell me about the pencil to the bar napkin moment 15 years ago when the originators of this film festival said we need to do a film festival and why Buffalo so I, I, John and I weren't around 15 years ago when Edward Summer started the Film Fest. He had a, a long and varied career uh, working in film and television. And I think he just wanted to celebrate film here in Buffalo. Um, we had one of the first dedicated theaters, if not the first dedicated theater. Um, so I think they want to celebrate that kind of history of um, cinema here. And yeah, so John and I came on in... John 2015, myself 2016, pretty much the whole team now is kind of brand brand new. And uh, I think Renee, uh, Renee uh, Russell is the only one um, who was here since the get-go. Um, she's on our board emeritus. Um, so yeah, I mean, John and I, and many of us actually are media producers. Uh, we really love seeing the film scene grow here in Buffalo and we wanted to support that by providing a proper platform. Um, our festival is really, really focused on the diversity of our community. We like to program really eclectically so that there's at least a little bit of something for everyone. Um, yeah, and we just love collecting in the theater. We love collecting online and celebrating film, so. It's cool, and, and, and to your point, John, I'll talk to you about this. Um, I think it's really interesting the way the movie sort of, I'll call it, Buffalo's has sort of a, become a set, right? For <laughs> yeah, movies so in cool. the last 10 years. I mean, it, there's been a boom of uh, movie directors, producers, uh, movie houses coming to Buffalo mm -hmm. saying, man, what a great place to shoot. It's affordable, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah. and, and so now what you guys are doing hands in hand with that and and the, the, the prospects of, you know, new movie houses and movie lots and movie studios being built. There's been lots of stories in the last I don't know, maybe 18 months about new bills of Hollywood type studios here. All that hand in hand is great for everybody in the film industry here locally, right? Absolutely. I mean, Buffalo, you think about it, it's, it, it's sort of, it's got everything, right? You've got the beach, you've got the city, you've got the suburbs. You really have every look for every American city, I think maybe except for like Hawaii here. You got everything. Maybe even put some white sand, uh, like Mickey Rats <laughs> in your Hawaii, some palm trees. But uh, no, I mean, Buffalo has got it going on for producers. They got a great tax incentive. We got a great film commission. So I think it's a, it's just a great place to do business for film producers. So 15 years of this, and that's kind of the, the beauty of, of my podcast is I'm trying to kind of expose things to people that would have no idea that there's a 15 year international film festival happening in our hometown going on now. Uh, and it's, not like a couple of films. Uh, you guys have 120 films in here. And like I mentioned, sort of in the open, long form, short form, documentary, every kind of genre you can possibly imagine. Uh, and there's people not just from Buffalo and Western New York. Now, granted, there's terrific, really talented filmmakers here. Mm -hmm. But 24 countries have representation in this film festival. Is that right, Anna? That is correct. And while many of the... Um international filmmakers won't be joining us. A couple actually will. Um, we have a filmmaker coming in from Pakistan. Um, <laughs> I think we might have a Canadian or two sneaking in. Um, <laughs> I'm not really, I actually would have to look to tell you exactly who's coming, but um, yeah, 
it's amazing. There's so much incredible work out there right now. It's actually really difficult, getting increasingly more and more difficult to make selections each year. Uh, we do program about 75% of our film programming from Open Call, and the other 25% will curate because we just were blown away by something at a festival, or just to kind of fill out that programming, make sure that there is literally something here for everyone um, in every genre and every form. Yeah, John, I was going to ask you, so go through the process about how films, I mean, obviously you can't take everybody that applies, no, no. but um, <laughs> talk about the number of filmmakers that, that apply, how many make the cut and sort of what's the process? Well, every year it's somewhere around 500 or 600 films we have that come wow. in through Open Call. And then we start our work in January. And then I usually start by, I go to, I usually go to Sundance or South by Southwest look for films there. We also keep an eye on what other regional programs are doing. We have other partners that we work with that represent films that are on the festival circuit. And so they're you know, usually telling us what they have or what they think the Buffalo audience might like. So in the case of our opening night film, we had seen it before it uh, premiered at Tribeca and we loved it. It was filmed here in Buffalo. Uh, it's called Catch the Fair One, great film. And, uh, and we were able to uh, you know, talk with the distributor about bringing it in uh, even before it pre premiered Tribeca and went on to win a directing award there this year. That's pretty remarkable. Um, and like I said, there's every kind of movie that anyone would ever possibly want to view, right? I mean, Anna, there's every kind of genre, every kind of length. Um, there are, there's like a student category, I think if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, yes. Um, there's students, there's a Western New York shorts block, there's horror, there's sci-fi, there's lo-fi, there is a uh, documentary, nonfiction, essay film. Uh, we have some really great musical docs. We have a Rick James doc. We have Res Metal online. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's just so much amazing content. Saturday morning um, cartoons. I want to give a shout out to yeah. that one. For oh yeah, Saturday time. morning cartoons will be great. It actually features a few students that have made some stellar work, as well as some like really seasoned professional animators, Pixar realm of things. And yeah, it's really, it's really wonderful. And Je we're talking with uh, Anna and John from the uh, Buffalo uh, International Film Festival going on now through the weekend, uh, buffalofilm.org, celebrating film here in Western New York, not only Western New York filmmakers, but uh, filmmakers from around the world. Um, and sort of to what Anna was talking about, like, I think people seeing this would be like, oh, it's just, you know, it's just, amateurs that you know it's stuff you're gonna no this is like real high quality filmmaking right yeah these are films that have played on the festival circuit they've been competitive they will eventually of course end up in a year or two on itunes and netflix and those places but this isn't amateur hour these are films that are acclaimed the the film that uh, catch the fair one just to use an example the producer of that film just won the oscar for nomadland yeah. So yeah, for best picture. So th that, you know, it really is a, a high quality film and high quality films that are made in Buffalo with Buffalo crews that are employing Western New Yorkers and contributing to the economy here. So it's kind of a win-win-win really. <laughs> so how do you find, so obviously a lot of these filmmakers, how many are you finding like the Western New Yorkers in particular, how many are you finding actually went away someplace to film school and that's where they got their training or learning, or maybe they spent time in Hollywood or New York, whatever the case may be. And that's how they sort of, you know, intern, maybe it's the, the right, um, um, you know, they got their, their education one way or the other before maybe coming home and doing movies here. How many of those stories are you finding out? There's a, there, I mean, there's quite, there's quite a varied mix um, I will say this about uh, Western New York and Buffalo in particular, there are many people that are highly educated, highly trained, highly specialized, everything from like underwater videographers to drone operators to people that have worked on enormous, uh, huge budget films in LA, in New York, in other countries. Um, it's really, I mean, people, if anything, they're way over qualified and over trained for a lot here. Um, so I really do hope that more out of town crews um, come in and, and hire principals here, as well as other people below the line. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, most of these filmmakers are either they've apprenticed through production, through working their way up as like a PA into, you know, electric or lighting or sound and then kind of learn that way. And a lot of people go to school as well. Um, School for the Arts doesn't always lend itself to a job. <laughs> There's always uh, something usually anyway that comes afterward. Um, so I think people are highly trained um, and 
yes, it's it's amazing. Yeah. The work and you, also, you also have people that settle in Buffalo because it's a great place to raise a family, Western New York. So you do have folks that are here, they work here, they travel out maybe to Louisiana or something to shoot a film and then they come back here. So we do have just a lot of great local talent that's sort of made Buffalo their hub, in addition to the expats that come back and show their films. We've got a good number of those as well. Yeah, John, I'm going to stay with you on this. So what makes, again, for people seeing this and thinking, what? There's, a, there's <laughs> an international film festival in, in, in Buffalo? Really? So what, what makes this, I guess is my question, what makes this film festival so credible that 600 filmmakers want their films in and part of this film festival? I mean, Buffalo is a great city, but I think what um, what we've been able to do over the years is I think we've just been able to increase the quality of programming and and um, and we've been able to just kind of broaden our relationships with the industry and with, um, you know, our partners and our partners in the festival world. And I think we've just it's been a slow build like any any kind of thing. It's it's always a slow build. And I think this year we really do have some great the stars always you know they usually align in an interesting way where we have you know local content or films that people are interested in locally um that uh you know that like the rick james documentary it's it's which is fantastic and you know we how could you say no to that it's right a, come by I, for sure yeah <laughs> um so in talk in terms of it's been around for 15 years right um all over those 15 years have you can you point to some let's call them graduates or alumni of the film festival that might make people go oh hey really whoa well we had a couple of years ago um kevin tent who's an oscar nominated editor who grew up in east aurora and he came back and presented a film at thomas hayden church called um uh crash pad and that was that was kind of a, a big one for us we had marshall which of course was one of the most notable productions here that was a, a film that played at biff and we had we were honored to have the premiere of that. Um, and anything else you could think of? We we had we've had a couple of alum that have kind yeah. of started playing the regional circuits like Biff, and then they their next movie we had one actually that was at Sundance this year. Uh, she had a, her her previous movie was at Biff and was on playing at like the better regional circuit film festivals, and then you know so it does you know that's one way that filmmakers can build. They play the regional circuits, and then you know they get funding and and uh, and they you know are able to get those connections, and then they get invited to bigger festivals. It, it is Anna really incredible if you think about the way you know you, you turn on your smart tv and there's a million platforms i mean to watch anything at this point right so what a bonus for filmmakers in 2021 to be able to do their film get an exposure at film festivals like this one and then know that it's going to end up on somebody's television in you know they can sit on their couch and watch this that's pretty cool and and by having the exposure of playing a festival like this that can sort of lend them to that right yeah so it, we really started doing the the online platform last year due to you know circumstance and necessity and at first it really seemed like a lot of filmmakers were hesitant actually we saw that a ton of uh last year a ton of non-fiction films documentaries were coming in and far less narratives so at first um there's this a kind of assumption that you'll kind of be devaluing your piece by showing it online first. Um, thankfully, that's all kind of gone to the wayside. And I will say for last year, there were a lot of filmmakers that were regional or New York state based that geo blocked their film for the entire world. And we had people watching films from almost every continent. So for them, it was a really wonderful way to really quickly expand their audience. Um, so I do think that, well, it's wonderful to collect in a theater and we love it. And that's part of why we do um, the film festival, I, collecting online and the afterlife of showing online is is really meaningful. And I think we're just starting to see just how much so. Um, the, the landscape is really changing quickly right now. Uh, accelerated change, something we can relate to. So, yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is it's I, listen, I, I know there's professional bingers out there. I'm not one of them. But it's still, even for a professional binger, to watch 120 films in a weekend, I think probably impossible. So they need <laughs> they need a place to view them, you know, ultimately, right? Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, um. John is a professional binger. Um, I'm a little bit less, I have a little <laughs> bit less of a, a full appetite. I'm very, very happy <laughs> one, though. 
Well, I'll, uh, go, I'll go back and say, though, it is so nice to binge in person again. You know, I just went sure. to the New York Film Festival and they're back in person again. And so it's just nice to be with cinephiles, to be waiting in line, talking about what you've seen, what you want to see at the festival, what you've heard is good. And, and that's I mean, I think that's part of the magic of it. With having the online platform, we can kind of give uh, films a little bit more time and space, maybe films that might get um overshadowed by the big centerpiece movies that we show at the North Park and give those films some you know, smaller documentaries and, and narrative films, uh, international films, a little bit more space so that audiences can find them and connect with them and hopefully also uh, share their experience with them. And um, I think we, we found that kind of works pretty well. So how good, Anna, how good is the filmmaking in Western New York? Uh, now, granted, some of the people that are here that are living here now, making films here now, maybe you're not from Buffalo necessarily, maybe they moved here because of the opportunity, but how good, you've been to a lot of the different, you know, uh, big film festivals around the world and certainly here in the country. How, how, how does Western New York filmmaking compare? Well, I think that Western New York filmmaking is just as good as filmmaking in any large city, especially when the resources come in. But I also don't really think that big budget or being really refined defines a good film. I think you can shoot a great film on your cell phone if right. you have a wonderful script, if you edit it properly, if you have that kind of vision. So I think that um, you know the economics behind it are just one part of what makes a film work. I've seen films with huge budgets not work at all. <laughs> you know, there's a certain kind of magic where an entire crew um, and all of the performers kind of come together. And that's what makes a really great film. And what I will say about Western New York is it is one of, I've lived all over the place and this is where I'm from. This is where I came back from or came back to very intentionally because it's a wonderful community here. Everyone is incredibly warm, incredibly generous and we are blue collar. We will work ourselves to the bone. I will say I have not seen that anywhere else. So in a weird way, I think this might be one of the best places you can make films. And if you're a true independent, you know, if you're making documentary films on your own dime and then you're going to sell them, this is a wonderful place because you can really make a dollar out of 15 cents. Um, so, yeah, I think we do measure up and then some. John, you want to comment on that? Or are you are you going to ditto it? I'm going to ditto it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a dollar out of 15 cents, a dime and a nickel. Um <laughs> So uh, have you guys watched to this point? Have you watched all of the 120? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, start, to, we, start to finish. You've watched all of them. Yes. We've watched all of them. I, we, I can't I can't ask you if you have a favorite, right? Because you can't be partial. Am I right or no? Or can I ask you? Uh, if you we can say we love them all. We can okay. say we, we love them all dearly. <laughs> we, we have a large committee that- It's also, like our children, you know? We right. love them all the same, right? Everyone has a favorite child. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> We, we definitely do have, like, we have a very large committee that also watches them because we like to get at least a couple eyes on everything because clearly I'm not going to love everything if it's outside of my interest or a type of genre I'm really not that attracted to, then maybe there's someone else that's better to watch it. So we try to have at least a couple people in the committee review each film um, that comes through Open Call and then also the curated films as well. So they are all fantastic. They've been vetted by some really, really brilliant people, some really generous people on our committee. Um, I will say that all of the films in the theater are amazing. All of our spotlight films are, are ones that we all kind of saw as favorites. 100 Years from Mississippi is phenomenal. Um, I can't recommend that one highly enough. Uh, Catch the Fair One blew me away. It truly did. It was shot here in Western New York. Kaylee Rees, world championship boxer, Kaylee K.O. Reese is going to be here. She starred in and co-wrote co co the film. Um, and also her producer, Kimberly Parker. Uh, uh, the Rick James doc is great. Um, uh, uh, the Rust Belt Driller, if you like Grindhouse, that's a really, really fun one. Yeah, that I saw that. that, that I also caught my eye. I was like, oh my God. We have yeah, a junior, yeah. we have a junior Tarantino in the house. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. And David actually is an alumni, David R. Williams, that, that directed that film. Tilkey. Tilkey Hill, Tilkey Hill <laughs> who used to be um, part of our team and has since kind of moved on to do just production. Um, so that's really wonderful. Tonight we have a really wonderful film that's not a spotlight. It was a late ad called Laguna Ave. And um, Ali Baron made it along with um, some really amazing, she's from Buffalo, along with some really amazing people. Um, so that's screening tonight at 9 
p.m. at the North Park after our opening night party. I just also want to mention that we have a lot of content that's outside of film. We are uh, an art city. We are well known throughout the world for our visual arts. Um, so we try to lean into that as well. We have an off-screen pr program of art and music that kind of piggybacks off of the programming in the film. So, you know, if we have a great music doc, we're gonna try and get that band. If we have a great uh, uh, art doc or something, we'll try and get that artist. Or if someone shows up on the soundtrack track for a narrative, we might try and bring them in as well. So all of our parties, all of our off-screen events and all of our panels, which also are curated from the filmmakers that are here, are free and open to the public. So if hold on. Have, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. If you have a bison pass, you get other perks like drink tickets, finger food, blah, 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 blah. So it's uh, uh, not blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Entrance to the Albright Knox Art Gallery, the Birchfield Penny Art Center. So it's really kind of an amazingly um, generous kind of package that we offer. And we do try to be inclusive of our, our whole community. We know that what the economics are here in Western New York, we know the amount of people living below the poverty line here is not okay. So we try to create a situation where as many people can come to as many things as possible. We also participate in the arts access program through ASI, Art Services Initiative of Western New York. So if you sign up for that, you can come for free if you don't have the money to come. Um, so we really do try to be inclusive. It's a big part of our mission, diversity and inclusion in our programming, but also in our community and also on our organization, our board and staff. So that's all really, really important to us. It's really awesome, by the way, that that new Rolling Stones documentary is is playing at the film festival, and you guys you guys are bringing in the Rolling Stones. That's because they they canceled their their stadium date, and I had tickets to it, and I was really pissed off. So it's really cool that you guys. I, I kid clearly. I kid. Yeah, they were bagging, just they were bagging and part. eventually we just had to say yes. We were like, okay, <laughs> Mick, yeah. fine. <laughs> Stop you can come me. to Biff. <laughs> hey, John, um, obviously there's a lot of movies to watch in a very short amount of time if people want to do it, you know, yeah. in throughout the actual timetable of the film festival this weekend. How do, what, what do you suggest in terms of sort of a, a, a map for somebody to, to, to watch? You know, do, do, do they watch all one from a different genre? Do they stay in their favorite? Like, what do you suggest they do? I mean, you know, the first year I went to Sundance, I got off the plane, I got to, got my badge and I saw a friend of mine and I was so overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. I've never been to Utah before. And I saw my buddy, David Ehrlich, who's a critic, well-known critic. And he goes, just dive in, just go to the movies and just get in line and go to the movies. And that was the best piece of advice I got. So I think just dive into the lineup, um, you know, come to the theater, come to the parties. A lot of the filmmakers are going to be in town as well. We have the Bison Pass, which is $45, as we mentioned, with parties and movies, both online and in theaters. And it's a really great value because you have that chance to meet with these filmmakers, to see their films and to see them first in Western New York. These are all Western New York premieres. So these are films that are like really fresh on the festival circuit, films that are playing in other major cities and smaller film festivals as well. And the fact that and you have the chance to see them in Buffalo. This is what I would have wanted when I was, uh, you know, living in Buffalo as a grad student is the ability to do this for $45 and just to have a whole experience. But yeah, we have everything in all different genres. Um, so I would just say dive in. And if you yeah. don't like something, you know, there's there's always something else to, you know, coming up in, the, in two hours. <laughs> do you find filmmakers enjoy or don't like watching their films in public so, some we have to take out for a drink while their movie's playing <laughs> <laughs> they get very nervous and we're like oh, come on we'll show you some buffalo hospitality let's go next door to mess k um but others you know are, you know they enjoy it they want to know where people are laughing they want to know where people are jumping or getting scared they you know sometimes and especially now post COVID, some of these filmmakers are coming to Buffalo. They've never seen their movie on a big screen. They've only done the virtual festival. So this is a nice break and they're you know, genuinely excited to be uh, seeing it with an audience. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen this year, but I'm sure we'll be buying some drinks, right? right. Anna? <laughs> always, always in Buffalo. Expecta <laughs> expectations are key, right? <laughs> High or low, whatever they might be. Um, really incredible, 120 films, a lot of local, 24 foreign countries represented in the Buffalo International Film Festival. 15 years of this, man. North Park on Hurdle, Birchville Penny over by Buff State on Elmwood, and virtually buffalofilm.org will tell you all the movies that you can see, how to get tickets for them, and all of that. I got to share one story very quickly. And it's kind of important to me because he's my neighbor. 
So a neighbor of mine literally lives, I look at his house out of the back of mine in Lancaster. He was part of the uh, Pan Am Film Division who had a movie at Cannes, which proves that Western New Yorkers can make that level movie. Um, so I, I felt like I, I should uh, uh, note that and that the director of that particular short, I believe, has a film called Mother's Day in this year's mm -hmm. Biff, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it's playing in our online program. Yeah. So it's uh, it's right now, um, the online program has started. So that is, uh, it started at midnight. So uh, yeah, it's, it's available to watch in New York State. So we definitely, uh, uh, it's a great film. So definitely check it out. Uh, 15 years of this, it's really cool. If you didn't, if you're a movie person, take advantage of this. You know, this isn't the, you know, let's be honest, a lot of the stuff on the big screen is junk. This stuff is primarily really, really, really quality stuff that movie people that, that are dug in, entrenched in movie making, they get thumbs up. So this is a really good chance to, to get exposure to a lot of films that ultimately might end up being huge before you even knew it, right? Mm -hmm. um, Anna Shamay, John Fink, guys, thanks so much. Congratulations on the 15 years. Let's get to 16 and 20 and 25 and 50. I won't be alive for the 50, um, <laughs> but let's keep it going. Congratulations and everybody, buffalofilm.org to celebrate all weekend long. Guys, thanks. Thanks, Thank Bill. You so Go, much, Bills. Rich. Go Bills. Go Bills. Thank <laughs> thanks.